Hello. I'm Greg Young. Um, I work on several open source projects, and basically all I'm going to do today is kind of update you a little bit on those projects. Um, the projects that I work on presently, I'm working mostly on Lucid, but I also do File Manager 2, um, L Switcher, um, EFTE, which is a file, uh, which is an editor, and um, I've updated the um, multimedia plugins, except they don't want to work properly, and then a few other minor things that I do. <clears throat> Lucid, like I said, is the thing I've been working on most recently. Um, updated it with uh, the help of uh, Lewis. Um, he did most of the help file. I just helped him to make it context sensitive. Um, <clears throat> we've updated to the latest Poplar, Deja Vu, and actually the latest JPEG, except we're recommending you don't use the JPEG plugin anymore because the uh, generalized bitmap plugin has been added to the Lucid package. <clears throat> um, I took all the uh, crap Lucid puts into OS2 any out of it and put it into its own any file um, to try, try to cut down on some of the clutter. It cleaned up the interface in some ways, which you may or may not ultimately notice, and <clears throat> got some more f features into the printing, and now have accept you. Um, support, yeah. Why don't you link to Lucidix? Because this gives you accept support right away. You don't have to edit. It's in Lucidix. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> the reason I didn't do it is because I didn't know that I could. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, just link it, uh, link your executable with it, nothing more will uh, uh, give it to you for free for an application. And any thread, any, even the main one, and in, in any thread started by a uh, begin uh, thread, um, it will just work. So not, not, not any single line of code. Okay. Sound, sounds fair. I will uh, make the changes. <coughs> And now, what do we need to do for Lucid? Well, annotation support doesn't exist in it presently. Um, well, you can fill in some of the blanks in those fill-in forms. There's a lot of them you can't. And that was originally because Poplar didn't support it. But at this point, Poplar does support it, so I need to include the support across into Lucid. Um, it has some weird printing problems. There are some native OS2 print drivers that it simply doesn't work with, which I'm not clear why. And I've had reports that there are some PDFs that don't print, even though other ones will with the same driver. So that's the biggest area I need to work on is the printer support. And then better localization support, little things like, uh, at least for me, it's a problem that all the measurements for the page margins are in millimeters, not in inches. <clears throat> I'm sure for most people in this room, that doesn't really matter. <clears throat> it's just hard coded in millimeters. Because uh, it was originally. The, the choice for PDFs instead of QPDF. So the biggest the biggest reason for this to use this instead of QPDF is so you can use old OS2 print drivers, which is my biggest problem is I can't I can't print from QPDF because I'm using an HP LaserJet driver. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, and in other words, I don't think, obviously, the back end is popular for both of them, so I don't think there's probably any huge advantage of those other than the printing issues. <clears throat> well, 
FM2, I say I work on it, but I haven't fixed anything in it recently. I went back to the last release, and basically I haven't committed anything even. I probably have some code that I've written that hasn't been committed, but that's about it. Is anybody using it other than me since I haven't heard from anybody forever about it? <clears throat> if you found some bugs, let me know. Um, probably something I should get back to. L-Switcher is probably the one that I should be targeting most. <clears throat> L-Switcher, the last version, had a maddening feature that if you, if you um, just rebooted, control alt delete reboot, um, it would lose everything when you reopened it. They'd disappear. They'd be open, but you couldn't find them. Well, the reason was is that the previous author had um, <clears throat> tried to set it up so that the, they'd be put back where they were on their various pages. So he mapped them in the any file to wherever they were located. The problem was is that when you rebooted, that all got slaughtered. And so they're, they're out there someplace. You can easily find them. You can <clears throat> just go out and grab them. But what they've been is they've been mapped completely off of all of the screens. So they're not gone, but it is sort of maddening when you reopen stuff. I figured out where he had done that, and I undid it. Um, <clears throat> and I should basically release the code that undid it. The same problem broke sticky windows where you can pull up everything on one window. Well, L-Switcher had nicely mapped it to one place. So every time you opened it, you went to that one place instead of it opening on the current desktop. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's a feature. It's, the other feature is that um, the reason, part of the reason that it's sort of not backward compatible with itself is all the settings were in a giant single structure, and that whole structure was saved to the any file. So if you changed one thing in the settings, the old any file wouldn't work. So it would have to blow out the old any file and start all over, and then you'd have to reset everything again. That's the that's what's held up me releasing it again, is I've got to go in and just cut those down so that all of the any file entries are separate so that it won't have to do that anymore. It, yeah, it will have its own any file. <clears throat> That's part of the project. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and as I said, I should probably actually bother to do that and release it. Um, <clears throat> EFTE, I haven't fixed much on it. I've got <clears throat> four rare traps or hangs, one of which I think is a t a, a accountable to um, e-styler, isn't even an EFTE problem. One of them has to do with a huge resolution monitor that tries to open it bigger than it can actually be. That one I can't figure out, and I have no way of testing because I don't have a monitor with a resolution that will do it. <clears throat> and there's a couple of others that they're up on the bug tracker that I don't recall anymore what they were. Uh, fortunately, they don't happen very frequently. In fact, there's one of them that I think only happens to me. <clears throat> um, there are some issues with the configuration files. It does some um, odd highlighting and things like that, which I have to go in and fix. And then the bigger project will be to, um, it has different personalities. In other words, it's got the native EFT, and then it emulates some of the other editors as for their interface, and what I'd like to do is to set up an emulation of EPM and E so it would basically replace them. <clears throat> One of the things I have to do is to get it to use uh, colors in the way that OS2 colors programs, not in the way that uh, it colors programs. Okay. <clears throat>
the multimedia plugins. I've got them all built with the newest libraries. The problem is, is that uh, the new FLAC doesn't play well with the new Verbius um, in that if I try to, ch to convert an Verbius um, format file to FLAC, it crashes the FLAC plugin. And I'm not sure there's any way to fix it because I'm not sure it's not in the library somewhere that is the problem. <coughs> But I'm continuing to work on that. The other thing it won't do is, is there's um, some very, very high sampling rate FLAC programs out there. And it just won't play them. And I think that it's actually the multimedia stuff in OS2 that doesn't understand it. I am going to try lying to it and tell it that it's a regular sampling rate and see if that'll fix it. But <clears throat> Well, it's the co the flak rate is 132,000 is the sampling rate or 192,000. I'd have to look, but it's it's something in a, like four or five times the regular sampling rate. It'll take 4,800 or 48,000. Yeah, 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 and that's that's what I'm going to look at doing or at least attempting to do. Some of the others, um, the <clears throat> help file compiler in Open Watcom is actually working and is out there, though it's never been released to anybody. Um, the only one that has all the new fixes in it are actually up on the Lucid um, SVN. So if anybody needs that compiler, just go out there and grab it off the FC SVN for Lucid. <clears throat> And I promised someone about six months ago that I would compile the latest code for Open Watcom and actually put it up on Hobbs. Well, I guess I haven't done that yet, but I will attempt to do that in the relatively short term so other people will have access to the newest code. <clears throat> so how can you help with development? Oh, there's a number of things you can do. You could do actual programming. You can write scripts to help automate things. You can update the documentation. And it's probably in a lot of ways better that people out there update the documentation than you have me update it. Um, obviously, installers are a big issue. Um, doing releases is time consuming and Obviously, it's nice to have multiple people able to build something because that way you can have people testing it without having to distribute it in its lovely broken form. And code cleanup is also important. Okay. <clears throat> I taught myself how to program in C and started programming. It's probably been eight or ten years ago that I actually did that. But I had no previous programming experience. Um, and the first thing you had to realize is you can't break stuff very easily. Yeah, you can break it really badly in your own setup, but as long as you haven't committed the code, or even if you have committed the code, it's really easy to back it out. So if you put something in that's broken, somebody else can go simply take it out and start again. <clears throat> what you need to do is find somebody to work with in my case, fortunately, Steve Levine was kind enough to help me and let me mess up FM2 <laughs> and have stuff pulled out of the SVN on multiple occasions or overwritten. <clears throat> yeah, committing code that doesn't build is probably bad form. And I've done that. <clears throat> And the truth was, there are things that I took on that Steve probably could have done in 10 minutes that I took four hours to do. But the truth is, is what it did is it saved him those 10 minutes. And it didn't make any difference that it took me four hours. So, you know, you need to consider that. You know, consider trying it. And there really are jobs for all skill levels. Fixing the spelling and the dialogue is simply a question of searching through the code and finding where the misspelling is. 
and most everybody has the skills to do things like that. Scripting, um, particularly automating things like building installers and stuff like that. I'm lousy at scripting. Uh, John Small did all the scripting for the FM2 builds and stuff like that because he's pretty good at it. So if you have a skill in that area, there are people out there that could really use your help because, like I said, having me do those scripts is probably a real waste of time. Updating documentation. First of all, you don't want programmers writing documentation because they're going to tell you what they think it does, at least what it was designed supposedly to do. Now, you know what it really does because you're actually using it. And so it would be nice to have people who are actually using it and have use cases for it. FM2 has functions that I have never used. I occasionally stumble across one of them. And I'm kind of amazed, wow, this is kind of a neat little thing. Like it makes objects. The reason I figured that out was I decided I wanted to make objects for Java, for Java out of um, the jar files and have it automated so it would directly do it. So it would call the right Java, the right Java and then put in the right parameters and stuff like that. I thought I was going to have to write it from scratch, and I'd get in there and find out that the function already exists, and all I had to do was modify it slightly to set these up. <clears throat> like I said, documentation is best done um, by someone who's really using the feature. One other thing is um, the IPF codes, all those funny little aspirins followed by something that's in the code, um, EFTE will actually put those in. It'll take the semicolons and the periods and everything like that and replace them with the um, code. So you can just pretty much write the help file as a text file and it will, ins it will put in most of the coding for it. So you can compile it as an as a INF or a help file. Yep, installers. Again, this is scripting, which I'm not very good at. And so, well, LSwitcher installs to ECF slash apps, which doesn't help us much in Arca, Arca OS, because that's not where it should go. It should go to Sys. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, there's a way to do that, but and that's one of the other things I need to fix. And then there are other things. Management of websites. You know, it would be nice if we actually updated the website so at least the current version number was showing on it. Uh, I'm not very good at remembering to do that. And there's a lot of things that it would be nice to document like, you know, things that we need tested, how to build, um, you know, facts, usage tips. And all of these things are things that people who do no programming at all can help with. Um, for some of the larger things, having somebody to manage the project, you know, herd the cats and convince the people who aren't getting paid that they really should actually update that software. Um, you know, and, and my testing always includes that it compiles without errors. And sometimes I'll even see if it runs. <laughs> and then bug reports, and I have the same complaint that our previous presenters had. Um, putting it in a forum isn't going to get you very far. Occasionally, I will actually go out and cut the thing out of the forum and paste it into a bug report because I found the bug, because I found the report interesting, but not very often. Um, you know, probably if you want to post something in a forum, post the question, "Where do I report my bug?" <laughs> Someone might actually answer that one, and you might actually get something fixed. There's lots of things you have to do. Before you post a bug, 
are using the latest software. Might have already been fixed, who knows? Um, did you read through everything and see if there's actually an explanation for your bug that you can do something or change some setting and fix it? Um, <clears throat> can you reproduce it? It's really, really difficult to do something about something that traps every 365th time it's run. It, it, it's just nearly impossible to figure out what is really going on. So if it's not reproducible, probably not going to get fixed. Um, is your system configured in some odd way? Do you have a bunch of atypical things loaded in? Because those things may be real important why it's not working. Um, and, you know, do you have the latest drivers and the latest software in most of these areas? Because oftentimes if you just upgrade, it'll fix things. And this was sort of plagiarized from David. Um, <clears throat> when opening a ticket, one item per ticket. Don't load me up with nine different things you want fixed because pretty soon I will have lost all of them. And don't usurp someone else's ticket. In other words, don't go in and say, I have a problem very much like this one because it may or may not be very much like that one. Put in a separate ticket. I would, I would just as soon close them as duplicates as to try to figure out if they're the same issue or not. Um, you know, put in a reasonable summary, something that might catch my attention. You know, the thing, it's broken, doesn't help much. Um, provide a clear description of it. And probably most importantly, tell me how you did it. How did you get it to crash? Because, as everybody else has said, if I can't reproduce it, it's really, really going to be hard for me to fix it. So give me all the details. That one little funny thing you think that you, that you do that you think, oh, that's got to be unimportant, that might be the most important step in the whole thing. So don't leave it out. Questions? Well, I thank you for your attention.